Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for tuning in today. Uh, we are running a spotlight session about some of the programs at the Luzon School of Engineering. Uh, today, we will be learning about all of our computing programs. These include computer science, computer security, digital media, as well as computer engineering, electrical engineering, and software engineering. And who better to tell you about those programs than uh, some of our professors as well as our students who are either teaching or taking courses or those programs. So we'll get started with some um, introductions. I'll be moderating the session today. My name is Mudita Kundra. I am the student recruitment officer at the Luzon School of Engineering. And I will uh, pass on the virtual uh, stage to uh, one of our students. If you can uh, introduce yourself, give us your name, your program, and perhaps a course you're taking right now. Uh, and for our professors, if you can uh, tell us about um, a topic uh, of your research, that'll be great. So if we can start with Tiffany. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Tiffany. I am studying computer engineering here at Lassonde. And a favorite course that I'm actually taking currently is 3D uh, Introduction to 3D Computer Graphics. Um, it's really interesting. You get to learn how something comes from just being like pixels to like a, an entire image rendered on your screen. It's really cool so far. And I really like it. Hey guys, uh, my name is Josh. I'm in my final year of computer security. And one of my favorite courses that I'm taking is actually a capstone project. So you work alongside a professor and tackle a real world problem. And the current problem that I'm doing is uh, a malware for like embedded devices. Like these are like watches and, and sensors and all that. So it's, it's really cool and uh, I'm learning a lot. Thanks, Tiffany and Josh. Uh, Professor Honzi. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome and thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Richard. I'm the chair of electrical engineering and computer science. Um, my research is on uh, electrical engineering. I, I do research on camera systems and uh, designing the chips that do sensing. Um, I'm almost also interested in uh, engineering education and the history of that. So two quite different sort of areas. Thank you. And Professor Amatsade, uh, you're muted, sorry. Okay, hello everyone and uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Marisi and uh, I'm teaching um, software engineering courses. Uh, when it comes to uh, research, um, I'm interested in computer science or computer engineering research by which uh, I uh, get to know how should I teach better or how you learn better. Thank you for sharing a little bit more about yourself. Um, so let's, uh, let's dig right into some of the common questions that we get from our students. Um, I'm going to ask Tiffany and Josh to sort of take a step back to uh, you know, a few years ago, perhaps, when you were in the same shoes as our future students. You're in grade 12, you're applying to universities, you're looking at programs. How did you decide on engineering or computer security? These were not uh, topics, or they might still not be topics that are being covered in school. So, how did you learn about these programs and decide this is what you wanted to do? Um, Josh? Okay, so I was always interested in uh, how my phone was connecting to Wi-Fi's and, um, and walking around my house or uh, in buildings like Tim Hortons and all that and just having this path of communication. So that was always interesting to me. Uh, my school didn't have any coding classes, so I had no idea on how to like um, proceed into into computer science per se and I had no coding background whatsoever I started reading more articles about like hacking and all that and as I got into grade 12 when we're supposed to search for programs we're going to apply to I started kind of getting nervous and and you know the first thing that came to my mind was computer science because I've heard a lot about it now, when I looked at York, I saw computer security and I'm like, oh, this is really cool because there's a lot of hacks going on. Um, nobody's really talking about the guys that secure the systems. 
And um, I saw networking as like one of the bullet points on it. So I was like, okay, look, I'm really interested in this part. So I really want to go into a program that I have a interest in that I've always been um, intrigued with. And um, that's how I made my decision. And when I got into the program, it was, it was kind of scary because I didn't have any coding experience, but um, you know, to the credit of the program, I, I didn't need any. Um, I, I was able to learn uh, based on the first year courses and, and build my skills up and gain my confidence. Tiffany? Nice. Um, yeah, so for me, I, oh, I do remember. So in high school, um, I took a coding course in grade 10 and I was actually like really stuck on like going into computer science for a really long while because I like just, you know, the feeling of like making a cool program. Um, and that was sort of like my passion for a bit until um, what tipped me over between the difference of like pursuing computer science over computer engineering was, I guess, like my interest in like virtual reality. And I just thought that like holograms and bringing that to life in the future was really cool when I was in like grade 12 making that decision. So that's how I ended up going for computer engineering over computer science because I did want to take sort of like that approach um, in that future career. So that's how I made that decision. That's great. So uh, perhaps I can continue the comment that you made and ask a question uh, to our profs. Uh, how can students understand the difference between science and engineering? Uh, perhaps, you know, computer science, computer engineering, and then software engineering. Uh, either of you can take that question. <laughs> All right, I press the button first. Um, so, so everybody's kind of familiar with the idea that that physics is a science and mechanics is kind of engineering. So, so physics is really the kind of science underlying mechanics, if you like. And uh, it's kind of very similar with with computer science and computer engineering in the sense that computer science looks at the fundamental reasons and the math why uh, and the algorithms and, and, and so on that make computing work. And the computer engineers then apply that uh, scientific knowledge to doing new things, to making new products, to designing things that, that humans use in, in, in um, in their everyday lives or, or for their safety and that kind of stuff. So, so, so the engineering is really how to do new things and the science is how to, how to, to find out new things. Um, the difference between software engineering and computer engineering is really about the mixture between software and hardware. So um, computer engineering is often about running kind of software as an integration with the hardware, if you like. So it's kind of, you know, a computer itself would be a good example. It has a bunch of software, but it also has a bunch of hardware. Um, software engineering is around making products that are software. So applying engineering principles of safety and the public welfare and those kind of things to large software project, uh, products. So um, designing it modularly, testing it, um, all those things about making a product that is entirely software, as opposed to something that's a mixture of a hardware and software. I don't think I can add more. I think uh, Richard's explanation was comprehensive. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for that. Um, and then, so for you both, uh, Josh and Tiffany, um, you know, you had an interest and in understanding of the programs that you were choosing. I'm curious to know how that has evolved over time, what was something about your program or generally that area of study that um, you didn't expect, uh, good or bad, <laughs> that you wish to share? Uh, we can start with Tiffany. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think this might be really common for a lot of students in high school, but um, they don't really explain to you like what exactly is computer engineering or a lot of like the like computing majors in general. So um, I came in with the expectation that it's like coding and hardware and you put it together and it's computer engineering. Um, that's the notion that I had. And I think that's really common among like a lot of other students that are considering um, like computer engineering or electrical engineering since the um, 
computing courses in high school are very broad in that sense, but something that I learned while I was going through my degree is that uh, computer engineering is actually a very broad field. Um, you can take the software engineering and like coding route, but it's also about signal processing. So a lot of like physics and things that electrical engineers learn. And there's also like computer vision, artificial intelligence, machine learning. That's another field under the computer engineering umbrella. Things like uh, computer graphics and virtual reality. Those also go under the like computer engineering umbrella. So I didn't know this until maybe like my third um, or fourth year, but it's a very broad field and you can go into so many different areas. Um, so that's what I like telling high school students that um, it's not just like coding and hardware and like that's all there is about it. Um, it's very broad. Uh, it's, it's kind of the same story for me. However, uh, I'm still learning uh, as time goes on. Um, in, in security, uh, particularly, it's it's such a growing field still, and and there's um, there's really like no uh, I guess lines between two different like practices. So it's easy to say pen tester. I mean that's the most uh, famous type of um, computer like I guess cybersecurity like uh, career. Uh, however, there's there's also stuff to do with regulation. I didn't know that. Um, I thought it was everything was only technical, but um, it's outside of that. It's it's uh, there's a lot of mathematics. There's a lot of uh, regulation. Ethics uh, is a huge thing that I really underestimated. That was a part of it. So um, even having to take philosophy classes to be well rounded was something that I didn't expect. Thanks for sharing that, Josh. Um, and I'll, I'll use that, that point that you made about being well-rounded to sort of segue into, um, you know, what else outside of your courses and your classroom. So uh, you've been able to learn a lot in your classes, not only about the course, but about the program and about the field. Um, so what are some other ways that you've been able to gain experience outside of the classroom? Um, this can be student clubs, projects, uh, anything outside of Lausanne that has helped you enhance your learning. Uh, if you can share an experience each, that'll be great. We can start with Josh, Josh this time. Yeah, so um, I actually picked up an internship uh, most recently at, at um, a cybersecurity startup. And the goal was to create like a credit score for, for um, a credit risk score based on how the company is doing. So um, I took it upon myself to like search, search for this uh, opportunity. And um, they were really impressed with uh, such a focused program in cybersecurity. And when I applied and went through the entire process, uh, the background that I had in third year, especially for computer security courses and everything helped me a lot because I was able to answer questions flawlessly and, and have a deeper understanding. And um, when, when, well, when I was working with the other interns there, um, it, I was actually, I actually like understood a lot of uh, like things around the company and the organization that really helped me, you know, put my best foot forward in that experience. And so I would say having experience in that startup was something that was really fun and, and enjoyable and it was balanced throughout school too, so. Excellent, thanks for sharing that. Tiffany, what about you? Um, so for me, I also had um, like a co-op experience. Uh, so I did work over the summer. I was hired um, at RBC for their Amplify program, which you can basically think of it as like a four month long hackathon where they give you a problem um, that RBC is facing and you're basically put on a team of four and then you go solve it. Um, that was really amazing. I was put on a team uh, with like a business analyst, a data scientist and another developer. Um, and it kind of fluctuates between like, sometimes you have like two developers on a team. Sometimes you have a developer and like a UX UI designer. That was a really cool role for me because even though I was hired as a developer, I actually ended up doing a lot of the UX and UI design work of um, our interface and like the product that we made. So I think that was really cool. I've always had sort of like a passion for um, creating things and I got to like bring out my creative side during that internship. And that was really nice to like learn about and explore myself. Like, you know, I didn't have to just like 
stick to the role that I was hired for. I got to grow and I got to do other things that still like suited my passions. Um, and yeah, I guess like by the end of the internship, like um, I also learned that there were other things uh, that engineers could explore too. So things like product management or like being a product manager, um, those are uh, actually common roles that other engineers can go into. So that was something that like I didn't know or considered. Um, a lot of the times you might be thinking like, I'll just be a software engineer or like a computer engineer when I when I grow up. But um, there's actually like tons of different roles that engineers can go into. It doesn't have to strictly be like a coding sort of role. Um, I just wanna get that across to students, but that was a really cool experience that helped me like see the other side of like career pathways. Thanks, Tiffany. Uh, continuing on on that thought, uh, Professor Amitzade, if I can um, ask you and Professor Hornsey, you know, what are some other opportunities that uh, open up through any of these programs that might not be so obvious uh, when you're just learning about the program itself? Uh, as Tiffany mentioned, you know, product management or product development was something unexpected. Um, any other areas? Um, career areas that our students haven't touched on yet that you'd like to share? Uh, well, uh, something that I think uh, most uh, undergraduates um, are not ready to think about it is the ability to do research in uh, some area that they work in. Of course, when they uh, get admission for software engineering or computer science or computer engineering, they have an idea what their going to get when they um, graduate, perhaps they're going to be um, a software engineer or project manager or something like that. But uh, something that I found uh, some of the students uh, find um, really exciting is to do research in um, you know some area that they learn about and they feel that there is a gap in knowledge uh, why not? Uh, I'm, I, I should, maybe I should be the one who try to fill the, that, that uh, gap. So um, I guess um, amongst so many other things, something that students get interested in is doing research in, in you know, different area, different fields in our discipline. Thank you. Uh, Professor Hornsey, would you like to add to that? Yeah, I was just going to say that um, for engineers, at least, um, only about half of the graduates from Canadian engineering programs go and work as engineers. Uh, the other half do all sorts of other things. Um, so quite a lot of our students, for example, go into the banks, as, as Tiffany said, um, do all sorts of things at the banks. We've got people at uh, e-commerce companies, um, pretty much all sorts of things businesses people will often start up their own business eventually um engineers often go into sort of management roles and and as again as tiffany said so uh really the engineering is uh, as someone described it as the swiss army knife of of uh degree programs in the sense that it has all the tools you need to do everything you could possibly imagine um and and uh, the computer side too. I mean, more, more, maybe more of the computer scientists stick with the computer science -y type of type of things. Um, but uh, certainly, certainly the point is that that people are not necessarily constrained by the discipline that you do. It's the skills, the mindset, the the approach to life, uh, and so on that you pick up along the way that that often um, sets people out on a career, mm -hmm. and not just the absolutely specific topic they choose. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that. So uh, for anyone who is, is tuning in, uh, we have a professional co-op team uh, that is here to support you once you arrive at Lausanne. Uh, if you are in the application journey right now, you don't have to worry about co-op at this time. The entire process begins once you're a student at Lausanne. The earliest students go on a work, uh, a work period is after um, the completion of your second year, so the summer months after that. And during your second year, uh, our co-op team will help you de develop your portfolio. They're the ones who keep an active job postings board. They have a growing network of employers who they connect with and uh, 
uh, generate opportunities for you. Um, you will have information sessions, again, helping you build your portfolio, but also connected to employers, not only for interviews, but also to learn about what the hiring process is like, so you're better prepared. If you're looking to do um, research, then we absolutely have research opportunities available with a number of professors um, as well. So these are available uh, certainly during the summer that you can do as a full-time summer job um, or part-time during the year as well. So, and it doesn't uh, always have to be, so if your background, if you're studying computer science, it doesn't always have to be in computer science with a computer science faculty member either. Uh, you might be working with, um, let's say a faculty member in mechanical engineering who is doing work that needs someone who is more fluent in computer science. So um, you can do that. And then uh, finally, we also have an entrepreneurship lab uh, or which is the Bergeron Entrepreneurs in Science and Technology Lab. Uh, in case you are really keen on exploring or enhancing uh, the startup experience. So you can actually do a co-op that's related to, uh, to working in a startup as well. So um, if you're interested in, um, you know, not just getting a job, but also exploring your own business venture, there's uh, financial and mentorship support available for that as well. So uh, lots of opportunities there. Um, so we will maybe take a moment uh, again going back to to our students is um, what do you do to uh, you know really balance school what do you do outside of the classroom outside of your program outside of co-op um, to either you know disconnect from uh, from school and take a break or to just energize yourself what are those days like? I guess I'll go first. Um, so I, I love to socialize. I hang out with um, my friends whenever I can. But most recently, I've been playing a lot of games. <laughs> so I, I take I take like about an hour a day out, um, like during set time. So if I study for a while, I make sure I set like an hour, hour and a half aside just to just to, you know, sit down in front of the TV or in front of my computer and just play whatever game I feel. Um, it just helps me relax and takes my focus away. And, um, you know, a game really makes you focus on uh, what's going on in the game. So you actually forget about everything that's going on and then you forget about your stresses. So it really helps me to, to play a video game or go hang out with friends. And then that's what I primarily do. I love that. Um... Yeah, same with Josh. Uh, video games are a really good way to de-stress and take a break. Um, recently, my friends and I actually, um, if we're all available, we normally call around like 6 or 7 p.m. Um, and we're all at like kind of different parts in our lives. So like some of us are still in school. Some of my friends are like already working. Um, but these are like my childhood friends. So um, almost every night or every other night, we sort of like call and just like talk for a while with whoever's available. Um, so that's kind of a way to like break up my day. Like sometimes I'm in the middle of studying and I get that call from my friends and it's one of those like, oh, I could take a break and like talk to them for a little bit um, and then get back to what I'm doing. So that's really a nice way to de-stress um, on days after like a really large like um, exam or test or like midterm that I've just completed. Um, sometimes I'll do like a craft or something creative the next day. Um, my sister and I really love doing DIYs. So like during October, like during reading week, I made like these little like leaf wreaths that were really cute. Um, my mom hung them on the door. It's Christmas time um, or like, yeah, uh, around Christmas time we do a lot of like DIY crafts so my sister and I made like these tiny Christmas trees that we decorated ourselves um those always just give a chance for me to like hang out with like my family or my sister and then kind of create something cool and just not think about school for a while so I really love doing those things thank you both for sharing that it's uh, good to see that you are uh, actually working on creating that balance where you're taking a break um uh, you know, with all the schoolwork and perhaps your part-time jobs. Um, so maybe I'll turn it over to, to our uh, faculty colleagues. Um, any advice uh, for students that you have uh, on, you know, what else to do outside of the classroom 
um, that they can use when they're in university or perhaps they can use right now because these are very different times. So any advice for our future students? I guess it's my turn to go first. Um, I, I don't think it matters too much as long as you do something else. <laughs> so, so it's, it's good to have more, more than more than uh, more than one thing to do. Um, so, I think a lot of people uh, get a lot of pleasure by exercise of various sorts. Go outside, do their stuff. Uh, you know, at any time of the year, it's different. Um, sports and so on. So I think uh, a lot of people gain satisfaction from that. Um, myself, I, I do quite a lot of cooking. Uh, I'm the primary cook for the household. So uh, my kind of spare hour a day goes into into preparing, preparing the meal. Um, so, so uh, you know, whatever, whatever works to distract your attention. I mean, it's just like the video games is if you, if you lose your attention while you're doing the cooking, um, it burns on the pan, so uh, you know, same, same, same kind of deal. It take, takes your mind away from things. As I say I like going outside because uh, it gives you different horizons and different kind of noises and different things to look at and stuff. So, so that, that, that's what I would do. Um, I'm sure Marzia has some some uh, good ones as well. So I'll pass it over to her. Uh, I also think uh, it doesn't matter what you do, but uh, it should be something different. Uh, actually, in one of my courses, which is a programming course, uh, I tell my student that if you spend one hour on this question and then you couldn't uh, find it, you will not find the solution unless you go out, go get a coffee, talk to your friend, um, sleep, um, bake a cake or do something well i myself do knitting uh, and it helps me to you know um, um, get focused more when i come back so it really doesn't matter what you do as long as you have a hobby uh, so you know, that that you really enjoy and um, you you can uh, use that hobby or you can um, you know um, get busy with that hobby to actually um, uh, get um, you know um, your your and to get more uh, focused when you come back to what you're doing so uh, i guess uh, they, they need to find uh, what is uh, their hobby or what is the thing that they most enjoy doing Thank you for sharing those additional tips. So um, a couple of more questions just around uh, students wanting to understand our programs a little more. So if we um, have a student who is uh, really not sure which area of engineering to choose just yet, um, so can they change once they're here? Uh, I, I can absolutely give an admissions related response to that, but, um, but more in terms of um, figuring out what program might be the best fit for them. So if they um, right now think that they wish to pursue uh, computer engineering, but may be interested in either software or electrical, what is the right time uh, by which they should be deciding um, what to do next? Professor Hornsey, if you um, can weigh in on that. Oh, I thought you were going to ask the students this. So, <laughs> George and Tiffany. Um, so, so the the first year of the engineering programs is designed to be, um, especially in, in the three programs in our departments, common. Um, so there is no absolute need to, for any of you to change to decide before you come to York um, which which of the software, electrical, or, or computer engineering programs you want to do, because you can. Um, switch between them. The, the courses in the first year are the same. Um, you can choose at the beginning, and there are various ways that you can um, be guaranteed your your um, the program of your your preference at the beginning. But there's always a number of uh, spots um, reserved for people who wish to uh, make up their mind while they're in first year. So you get a chance to to look at the different courses, to speak to other students, your your teaching assistants, your professors, that kind of thing, um, and uh, and then uh, change your mind if uh, that's what you want to do. Yeah, and I'll uh, sorry. Um, 
I, I can weigh in on that. Um, uh, yeah, like the the first year of engineering is really just meant to like give you all the fundamentals. But if there is something about a specific course or topic that really clicks with you, just like follow that gut feeling or that nudge. Um, go research about it. Go look it up. See if that's something that you could see yourself like doing as a career in the future. Um, those moments are really like crucial for a student, like when you're deciding like what do you want to do after graduation. So um, Lausanne does have a lot of like program fairs where like you can talk to different professors and students in the different programs um, and they make it really accessible for like you to just get opinions of other students who are like in their second third fourth year um, and they know a bit more about like their field it's really important to like talk to professors and students about that so then you get an idea of like oh yeah this field does sound really cool and um so whatever like really resonates with you uh that's how it makes it easier to make your decision. Thanks, Tiffany. Um, and, and Josh, you mentioned earlier uh, that, uh, you know, you weren't sure what uh, programming or coding would entail. So how was that first university programming class? Uh, I am going to be 100% honest. I was very nervous going into the first class. And uh, when I picked up my textbook, I seen this uh, 500 pager textbook on something that I had no idea about. But um, as as I started going to lectures and then um, you know going to the first lecture and then second and all that, um, as long as I was listening, I found that I could follow along. So um, listening to the lectures really helped me out a lot. Um, I learned more by listening, so it it, it kind of uh, gave gave me an advantage uh, for that. And you know, uh, professors like create um, slides that that are really easy to like follow and understand. Um, I guess one of the biggest tools that uh, I think Tiffany will agree to this as well is Google. Um, so you know, when whenever whenever I like whenever I'm trying to learn something, um, learning to search on Google and and using other resources outside of the school like system is 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 very valuable. And um, I learn a lot of topics in depth as a result. <laughs> so, uh, Professor Amazade, uh, you're passionate about uh, engineering and science education and, and teaching. Um, any thoughts about, um, you know, what students should keep in mind or, or do as they're transitioning to university? Uh, at the first is uh, time management. Well, um, well, university is a bit different from high school. So in high school, I guess um, a certain topic is taught and a certain question is asked. In university, uh, well, we want a student to uh, learn how to learn. Therefore, uh, if, they, if the course is a three credit course, it doesn't mean that they have to spend only three hours. Well, we have some courses that for three hours, uh, for three credit course, uh, they have to spend six hours, but we have other courses that for um, a three credit course, they have to spend maybe 12 hours a week uh, to be able to successfully uh, pass the course. So uh, time management is very important. So it's a bit different from high school. Uh, so they should be prepared for it by managing the time correctly. They shouldn't be scared at all uh, because we assume that our students uh, come to university with zero knowledge in computing. Therefore, whatever that they should learn, they, sh they should learn it in our lectures. Also, they shouldn't be shy to ask a question. Well, we are here to help students. So it is our job to answer a student. If they have a question, they should ask and we will be, we will be happy to answer them. So uh, these are the things that I can, uh, yeah, I, I think it, it's important for a student to know, yeah. I appreciate uh, everyone bringing up different perspectives 
on that um, for again our future students tuning in. Um, you know we have a number of services that and supports that are available for you um, that can be you know your peers. They are in the same shoes that you as you are. So it might feel sometimes that you're the only one who doesn't have uh, an answer to this question. Just turn around and ask. Uh, I'm pretty sure you won't be alone. Um, you can absolutely ask your faculty uh, members or sorry, your professors uh, during the class, after class. Uh, they also have office hours, which is when you can talk to them about a concept that you need clarification on. Uh, there's also um, academic advisors who are here to guide you pretty much like guidance, guidance counselors throughout your study. Um, if you are having um, you know, uh, trouble managing your schedule that they can help suggest resources or they can help you adjust your uh, schedule as well to make sure that you know, you're able to manage and be successful. So um, as, as uh, Professor Amaz, as I said, please don't hesitate to ask us, um, ask us questions. Um, you have another question that is somewhat specific to a program. So, uh, and uh, again, one for one of our professors uh, that we commonly see um, is what's the difference between, we talked about the difference between or among the engineering programs, um, but for someone who's trying to understand the difference between computer science and information technology, uh, if you can help us uh, get that clarification, that'll be great. That maybe is for me. Um, so, so uh, yeah, at York we have uh, computer science uh, programs, but there's also um, information technology in a different part of the university. Um, the, the focus of that is is on a mixture of uh, computing and, and business. So it's very much more about the um, kind of kind of the uh, how shall I say the 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 system administrator type of type of role. So how do, how do you um, educate people to, to be responsive to the needs of, of the customers um, and in a technological environment? So it's in that kind of business and technology uh, kind of overlap. Uh, computer science is much more about the science than about the, the, the delivery of it to customers. Thank you, Professor Hornsey. Um... We have one more uh, program specific question and then perhaps uh, we can wrap up. We're coming at time. Um, so one of uh, the questions we have is um, regarding our digital media program because uh, we offer it at the Lausanne School of Engineering. It is also offered by the School of Arts, Media Performance and Design. So if you're uh, trying to decide where to apply, it is a joint program. So you can apply to either of the faculties. Of, of course, we would like for you to apply to Lausanne, uh, but it's truly a joint program. You'll be taking courses that are taught by faculty members at Lausanne, but also uh, professors at the School of Arts, Media, Performance and Design. Um, and it does uh, require one grade 12 math, uh, 12 U math course, uh, which means um, there will be some math when you are here as well. So if you're really trying to decide whether you're interested in any programming at all versus if you're more inclined towards classical and digital art only. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, not sure if any of our professors want to add anything um, to uh, any more information about the digital media program. Okay. All right. So yes, we, uh, you know, if you have any further questions, uh, again, just send us an email. We do have student ambassadors who are not on this call right now, but who are in the, the digital media program and we'll be happy to, uh, get some answers there for you. Um, all right, so uh, I'll sort of open it up uh, to see if anyone has any any final comments. Uh, if you can maybe just uh, give me a nudge if you do. Uh, if not, then I just wanted to thank everyone for tuning into this call and a thank you to our panelists, uh, our professors, as well as our students for joining and sharing your perspective on uh, life at Lausanne and all of our amazing computing programs. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.